Well, that was quite an exciting vote. The White Queen is both disappointed and annoyed. With one missing. Emma looks at Captain Kate's empty seat. And one abstention. Mr. Sinister Mock Shrugs. Sebastian Shaw, the Black King of the Hellfire Trading Company, smirks. How disappointing that our Red Queen does not have time to properly manage all her responsibilities. Emma retorts that Kate has already let her know that she was detained while doing the great work of getting their people home. Did she now? <laughs> he leans back, relaxed. Krakoa bless her. <laughs> Across the council table, Storm observes their exchange and something does not feel right. Welcome, Marauders. Callisto, Storm's longtime frenemy, the former leader of the Morlocks, now turned White Knight of the Hellfire Trading Company, welcomes both squads of the Marauders to Island M. You're late, Bishop. Bishop, the newly appointed Red Bishop of the Hellfire Trading Company, explains that the pair ran into trouble in Madripoor and then diverted for a muted refugee boat that was in trouble. The Red Queen didn't tell you? The captain has not been around. What? She should have been here yesterday. When Storm also joins them, Callisto throws a knife. Got it. Storm catches it. Storm and Callisto have had a sordid history against one another and as allies. Morlock. The two co-leaders of the Morlocks. Hug. Didn't have you pegged for this gig. Back at you. How are the Morlocks? Still as unruly as ever, but they're safe. Callisto explicates that in exchange for being her bodyguard and personal mercenary, the White Queen has helped relocate all the remaining Morlocks from the sewers of New York to a nice retirement community in Rio Verde, Arizona. So they just whip knives at each other's faces? No wonder the Brotherhood never finished off the X-Men. When you're done here, will you return the Marauder to Krakoa for me? I'm headed back to Madripoor. Something's not right. Minutes later, Madripoor. Bishop, now disguised in riot gear, sneaks onto the deck of a salvage ship searching for any sign of Kate. Out of his peripheral, he thinks he spotted something floating just under the water. To get a better look, he goes below and steps out into one of the boat's underwater observatories. Damn it! Uh, Emma, Emma, Emma! You hear me? Yes, Bishop Batir. A telepathic voice responds. Any news on the whereabouts of our Red Queen? He tells Emma to look through his eyes, and he apologizes for what she is about to see. Oh, no! Catherine! I can hear your heart racing in my ears. I'm sorry. No need to say anything. I'll watch out for her now. I'm going back up to get her body. You get the team here. Distraught, Emma falls to her knees and then telepathically summons the Marauders. And to her own surprise, Emma Frost, the White Queen, struggles to hold back the tears that begin to swell in her eyes. Later, Hellfire Bay, just outside the White Palace. Iceman is the first to hail the White Queen's telepathic summons and joins her and her brother Christian Frost aboard Emma's latest million dollar investment, the Mercury. Pyro and Storm are back in Brazil. Emma takes a deep breath. Oh, Robert, I'm afraid I need you to steal yourself for what I must tell you. What is it? What's wrong? Minutes later, Southeast Asia, Madripoor. Bishop has retrieved Kate Pride's body. Emma. If you're still watching through my eyes, there's no need to continue. Kill is confirmed. As he makes his escape. Whoa! 
Did we just hit something? Yes, Lucas. An ice glacier. Please brace for continued impact, darling. Kill No Man is one of the three mutant laws created by the Quiet Council for the mutant nation of Krakoa Island. Murderers! But there are no laws against freezing the air or freezing blood vessels. Iceman and Bishop are teleported onto the Mercury with Kate's body in tow. To Arbor Magna for Kate? Yes, and with haste. <sighs> I will meet you there. First, I need to tell Storm.